he was the first person I'd ever met that I saw his drawings, saw his prototype, manufactured it. He received a patent and he put his on sale. So I okay. thought, well, if my son can do it, I can do it. Okay. That's right. Hey, this is Matt Helton with One Trust Home Loans, and you found the Serving Senior Podcast. Now, this is the podcast where we highlight those businesses and professionals that are helping seniors not just get by, not just survive, but thrive in their retirement. And today we have another one of those special people and businesses. Now we have Miss Faye Pryor, and Faye is the CEO of Blanner Products, and they come up with interesting ideas to help folks age in place. And one of their first products was called the potty cap. Yes, the potty cap. I said that. She's going to share with how it works and how it helps seniors. And you're going to love her and her personality. So Faye, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, Matt. I'm, yeah. I, I'm, I'm just uh, anxious to share my story about potty cap. Well, I'm anxious to hear it. And we, you you and I were just talking. And you said, what we're going to talk about, I said, just be you. Just be awesome like you always are. Mm -hmm. And we'll have some fun. So thanks for being here. And, and we always appreciate you and your smile. Okay. Well, Miss so, Fox, I'd love to hear your story. And a lot of times what people like about business too is maybe your coming up story or maybe give us some background on you before you dive into we'll we'll leave potty cap as the suspenseful suspense hanging out there, what it is and how it works. But could you share with us maybe where you're from, you know, what you did in the past, and then bring us up to speed how you came up with this idea and what it's all about. Okay. Well, I hope I don't take too much time talking about things other than potty cap. That's okay. But uh, I am a Gallatin native. Oh, nice. I'm a graduate of uh, the 1973 Gallatin Senior High class, which happened to have won the basketball championship that year. So I'm very happy That's about awesome. being a part of that. Yeah. Because I love basketball. So That's much. great. But um, I start the the uh, interest that I had in physical therapy was one in which. Uh, there was no physical therapist in our in our city. Uh, okay. uh, we had a visiting physical therapist that had worked in the uh, had uh, had received her trainings from the army. So at 14 years of age, okay. my my cousin was at her babysitter's home, and because she had wet on herself, the babysitter put her in a tub of scalding hot water. Uh. And uh, which she suffered second and third degree burns. At that time, I didn't know what would be what would be my 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 journey into physical therapy. But it was at that moment I learned from my mom how to take care of burns, how to do range of motion, how to teach somebody to walk again. And that summer, she took me to the library, and it was this book called Two Thousand and One Careers. Mm. I opened the book, and there it was like maybe the second or third page. It was physical therapy and everything that it said is what I had done with Pam. Okay. And I thought, well, maybe that's what I want to be because at first I wanted to be a nurse, but I told my dad, I think I couldn't stay clean enough to okay. be a nurse wearing all that white. Okay. So, make, making a long story short, I told my guidance counselor at Gallatin High that I want to be a physical therapist. She put me in physical ed courses. Mm. So I was surprised when I graduated from high school that I needed to take a lot of science courses. So I did um, that summer, I took pre-biology, pre-physics, pre everything pre I needed to take in order to be ready my freshman year to take some science courses. So um, I was the first graduate from the Sumner County Schools to graduate in physical therapy. Okay. I was the second African-American therapist to work in Nashville as okay. a physical therapist. Got it. From that time, I worked with two other nurses in the Hendersonville area. We okay. opened up a home health care company called Willowbrook. Okay. We were one of the largest home health care companies in the state. We had over 300 employees. Nice. So I've had a history of, of being involved in geriatric settings. Okay. I've worked in the prison. I had the opportunity to meet, uh, I don't know if you want to call it an opportunity, but the, the gentleman that, quote, murdered Martin Luther King was my patient. Oh, wow. And so we, I mean, I, I can give you the gamut of therapy in different settings. What brings me to potty cap is that as I was completing, um, I had sold my stock into Willowbrook and okay. went to work at Bethany Healthcare. Um, 
and became a rehab director there. One of the patients had asked me to put them on the on, a, on the commode. And I knew I wasn't going to be able to do that by myself because she wasn't able to walk, but she could stand up. So I told her, let's try using a bedpan. So if are you familiar with a bedpan? I've never used one myself. Okay. All right. Do you know what they look like? Yep. Okay. So suffice it to state. Women, when they can't get to the bathroom, usually in hospitals and, and rehab and long-term care facilities, they will either have a catheter, they will have an adult diaper, or they will use a bedpan. Men, on the other hand, have had urinals forever. As long as I can remember, mm. I've always seen a male urinal mm. in healthcare settings. So anyway, I put on the bedpan. I said, Miss White, and she told me I could use her name. She's passed away since then. Okay. I said, when you lift your bottom, don't shift, lift so I can get the bedpan out from under you. She lifted, she shifted, and it went everywhere. Mm. So as I was helping her clean up, she pointed her finger at me and said, you would think y'all would have made something for a woman to, instead of laying on their backs on a bedpan. Mm. And at that time, I was 40, I, when I, I was 50 something years old, and I, I had never thought about a woman having a urinal. I, it never crossed my mind. I just thought, well, we just don't have urinals. A gentleman walked into the room with a baseball cap. I looked at the baseball cap and I looked at her, and this is after she's been cleaned up. I went back to my office, got a clean baseball cap. And, and when I got back to her room, she was sitting on the side of the bed. And I said, Miss White, if you had to use the bathroom in this, how would you use it? And she flattened the brim, slid it under herself and said, do you want me to? And I said, not yet. Okay. That was 2009. 2017, I met with some of the engineering department at TSU, the physical therapy department at TSU. They helped me make our first prototype. And in 2021, we sold our first unit called Potty Cap. The first hands-free, portable female urinal on the market in America and probably in the world. We just received our full patent week before last. Good so we are fully you. patented and we are selling on Amazon. And my goal for this year and continuing is to tell women, when you think of a female urinal, you'll think of Potty Cap. Wow. What a story. That's fantastic. Good for you. So, well, thanks for bringing this up to speed. I guess maybe um, on a side note, anybody that's wanting to start a business or wanting to create a product or, you know, oh. anybody, that's, anybody that's got a dream out there, I guess, what were some of the things that you found that were harder than you expected that maybe you could share with somebody if they're in that situation so they could maybe navigate that? Matt, I would love to talk about that because, I mean, I can talk about potty cap all day long, but here's the thing that I found so, in some ways, challenging, some ways, frustrating, and some ways, God is just taking me through each step. Mm -hmm. I had never in my life met anybody who had a dream, who uh, got something patented, got it to manufacturing, and sold it. Mm -hmm. Never. Mm -hmm. I, I talked to my banker. I said, is there anybody I can talk to who has who has created anything and they've had to manufacture it, get it patented? And he said, no. And you think in my line of work of 50 plus years of being out there, I would have met somebody who had gone through all those steps. Sure. Now, I met people who had gone through each st a step, but they didn't go through the whole thing. Yeah. So besides uh, my son, had um, manufactured a, uh, a um, oh shoot, what do you call those the bags that the, that the kids were put their schools, the books and everything in? Kind of a backpack type. Backpack, okay, exactly. He was the first person I'd ever met that I saw his drawings, saw his prototype, manufactured it. He received a patent and he put his on sale. So I okay. thought, well, if my son can do it, I can do it. Okay. That's right. So he was Amen the first person I ever met. That okay. Did. And his bags were called AU, but I'm not here to sell his bags, right? Okay. But as I saw what the the uh, the blocks and, and the steps he had to go through, then some of it was just a learning for me to know not to make those same mistakes. 
the cost of a patent can be overwhelming. Wow. And, and I can see how the average person could not, you can have a great idea, but the money that it takes for each step, mm -hmm. you know, it, it could put you out of business. And I, right. and I knew I wasn't going to put them, I wasn't going to put my house up. 1K left, but it did take a chunk of my 401k. Okay, okay. got it. But what I, what I know this was a God move was the uh, attorney that we work with. So the first few months, you know, I was paying religiously, you know, those, and you would get a bill for 10,000, sometimes 5,000. I mean, there was just, and you couldn't, if you didn't pay it, they weren't going to the next step. Got it. So, um, probably after six months or so of being uh, working with the attorney, they called me up one morning and said, we've decided we're going to continue working with you, but we're going to do it pro bono. Now, Wow. I did not know what pro bono meant. Uh, you quickly but found it. But listen, but I was trying to be, oh, okay. I said, okay, well, great. I said, so after you do this pro bono, will I get the bill at the end? And he says, no. What we're saying to you is we're going to complete this patent free of charge until you get the patent. You will not owe us anything. Wow. And I'm going to tell you, he kept his word. I got a, a email, what, maybe a month ago, and they were saying it's complete. Your patent is fully a, a, approved and you should be receiving your certificate from the U.S. patent, whatever they send. So, I mean, those are the things that you think, oh my God, somebody's believing in us too, you know? Yeah, that's and awesome. So that was a plus. Now, the other thing that was costly was the manufacturing. Mm. We 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 thought we were going to stay in America. You know, you've seen these cars made in America. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Well, sometimes it's not that cost effective wow. to stay in America. Okay. So the uh, cost was nearly doubled what it costs in America compared to overseas. So okay. we've had to make some, we had to make some adjustments like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've met a lot of good people along the way. And it's one thing I can say to those of us who have made it or making it, that it, it's incumbent on us to share it with others. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, wow. I would hate to think that we're going to hold, you know, you've got information that could help somebody make a difference just because you don't want to share. So, wow. That's that that was a part of it. So that was awesome. Yeah, yeah. What a what a great what a great story. Maybe um maybe share a little bit about some um I know you're starting to sell the product, et cetera. I'm sure you had lots of testing. So maybe share some testimonials or some stories of people that, you know, what they would have done to use the restroom and now what they're able to do with this would be great. Okay. Well, I'll be happy. But during the early uh early uh, portion of us testing when we were working with TSU, there was a patient that was, I would think maybe 48, 49 years old, that was uh, paralyzed from the waist down. Okay. She, could, she could sit up, and but she couldn't stand to walk to the bathroom. So they would have to put her to bed around five o'clock in the afternoon because of the staffing issue. And uh, so she was one of the first ones I thought I could try with the potty cap. So she had the ability to get on the potty, to be able to use it from the wheelchair without help. So that was a plus. And that, that's something you can, uh, that, I would say that's the selling point. A lot of women uh, and a lot of the healthcare facilities think, uh, can I use it lying down? It, it wasn't meant to be used lying down. It's okay. meant to be used as if you're on a toilet seat. Okay. You're just in a seated position or you can use it standing. Anyway, so she was one of the one of our first uh, ones to try it. That so that was on a Friday. On that Monday, she's waiting for me at the door of the facility, and I thought, oh my God, she's going to tell me something terrible happened. I said, so let me be prepared for this. And so when I got into the into the lobby, she said, I just couldn't wait to tell you that I was able to sit up two nights in a row and look at television sitting. And I use the bathroom all by myself. And so that it brings chills to you when you know. A lot of times we take things like that for granted. Mm. But when you lose it, then you look at how much you missed the ability to do things like that. Sure. 
Uh, I had another lady who bought one from me just because she loves me and she's a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And she said, I, th I don't think I'm going to need this, but I'll buy it because I know you get it on the market. So that was a year ago. Recently, she uh, we were at church. She said, I want to tell you, if it hadn't been for the potty cap, I don't know what I would have done. She said, I could, because she was in so much pain, she suddenly been diagnosed with some type of arthritis going okay. on. And she can't walk to the bathroom quick enough. Oh, to get there in time gosh. and she says Faye I'm just sitting there on the side of the bed it's there for me to use it I use it and I go back to sleep like I haven't missed a beat and so those are some of the positives that's what and one of the reasons that we made it wow. you know to make it to give it more efficiency to be easy to use and to use it when you need it yeah so, those, those are some plus and then of course I've got those who have used it in the cars for emergency kits a lot of my mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of people have said they have used it for their children. Mm. Uh, you can actually take, oops, I don't know if you can see it, but a lot of them will actually take this out for the boys. Okay. Yep. And put this back on for the girls. Okay. That's so what. Be, and so they've used this as an emergency kit for in their cars. Okay. Yeah. So it works could, out pretty good. That's all. Yeah. Could you hold it up and yeah. kind of dip? Yeah. Put you it. can see it. I don't, can you see it? Yeah, if you move it down a little bit more, where the down, yeah, yep, that uh, where okay. the alignment. Okay, here's the front little. of it. Okay, so it has that guard, so if, when you're when you're using it, it stops the it, mm. it won't overflow, mm -hmm. and it has the uh, dip down, so it's not gonna roll. It's it's, it's not gonna come back. So mm. it's I can almost guarantee you, without being too literal, there are two things women don't like. They don't want anything on their hands. And they don't want anything between their legs. Mm. So this is designed so it captures all of that. So they basically they can just sit right, yeah, just sit down. Sit right on it and let it go. Let it go. And let that, it go. There you go. That's it is, and, it, that's, and it's reusable. It is um, I mean, I've had mine for three years. I don't use it every night. I use it just to remind myself, okay, Faith, this is what you made. How's it going? Uh, but yeah, and it soap and water, it doesn't hold odor. It's, you know, pretty unique. That's and I tell people for the cost of one month of adult diapers, you can have this. Wow. Unbelievable. Okay. Well, if someone's, um, if someone's watching this, I'm sure they've already fallen in love with you and your personality <laughs> and your story. So I'm sure that they'd love to help you. So I guess what would be an ideal client for you as far, you know, they could send it to their friend, right. That needs to use the right. bathroom night. That's perfect. <laughs> We'd love to help you sell a thousand of these, not just oh. one, if that makes sense. So would it be, you know, a hospital administrator? Would it be a Definitely. facility owner? Or what tell maybe some, give people some examples of who needs to watch okay. this? So I would say all of those that you just stated. Okay. Uh, and I've talked to administrators of hospitals and they've said to me, it costs too much. Okay. Mm. Yes, the a typical male urinal runs about 10 cents. Okay. Compared to my $30 one that I would sell to the facility now but here's the but to that women fall more i mean there's a higher incident of women falling trying to walk to the bathroom than okay. they are men because the men have urinals uh, so i would say if you're concerned about reducing the risk of falls in your facilities ideal for the women who are able to walk but may not be safe to walk by themselves mm. so when i market this i definitely make presentations to therapy departments and I also encourage, let them even purchase one. And by the way, you can get them on Amazon. But uh, but for the facility, I also look at the uh, staff shortage. If mm -hmm. you can teach a person how to use this, that reduces that patient call, uh, pushing the button, the call light. Wow. And reduces the need for that staff person to take that time. It's an average of anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes per episode to help women on yeah. and off the use the bathroom. So okay. imagine how much money and time you would save, even if you had 25% of your patients using this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and, you know, so that I'm trying to show them, okay, it doesn't cost 10 cents, but it could still save you mm -hmm. laundry, housekeeping. The landfills are now being filled up so much quicker with adult diapers than baby diapers. <laughs> okay. And so, so there's, there's, there's such a cost savings if you don't just, if you, if you just not focus on what the amount is 
just for the amount of the unit. I look at it as something that it could be life-saving. I know it can be life-changing because if I can keep many women using it at home, it may reduce them having to go to the hot, to nursing homes. Mm, yeah. Uh, you know, because they get used to using adult diapers, become more incontinent, boom, before you realize it, mama's not able to go to the bathroom anymore because yeah. she's using diapers so much. So that's awesome. That, that was the area there. So we're also looking at having some pants. I mean, we've, we've got several things down the pipe. Instead of the um, the bottle, we're looking at a biodegradable bag. Okay. So when you use it, the, the, the fluid will gel and you can actually throw it away. So I'm hoping okay. that'll be something we can come down, come out with by next year. Okay. So, nice. But to answer your question, from young, from as young as six years old, have they've used this in the car? You know, if you got kids that you're driving to different places, yep. camping, I've got women who <laughs> use it on boating trips when they don't have, uh, oh. when there are no uh, bathroom accessibility yep. on the boat. And uh, it, it, it's so easy. You can put a cover over you and nobody has to know, oh, yeah. she's doing her thing. Okay. That's, that's awesome. So what we have found that there are so many ways, uh, other uses, I should say, of the potty cap that where I originally thought it would be just for nursing home use, it has expanded to truck drivers, campers, boaters. You know, it, the bottom line is if you need to use a bathroom and you don't have one, that's a potty cap. That's so cool. So it's so it's kind of slanted towards female, but it still has use. The whole the whole base of oh the family could use it on the it. family could use it exactly. And let me tell you, I didn't say that. One of my uh, one of the guys who's a truck driver, he told me that he says you need to quit saying it's for female because I use it too. I said, okay, I'm gonna have well, to see that, how I'm gonna change that. Hey, that's awesome. That would be a lot better than our McDonald's cup that we make our kids <laughs> sometimes. Be a lot, sa a lot safer and cleaner. We, we might yeah. need to edit that part out. My wife's not gonna like it. <laughs> made, but yes, ma'am. Well, that's a great. That's an awesome, awesome idea. Uh, maybe I'm sure you get asked a lot of questions about you know. I guess you happen just to be now in the uh, in the uh, what do you call uh, your body your body functions right? That's kind of your business now is body yeah, functions. Yeah. So as, do you as have a, any as a therapist? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any resources that you recommend for people when they start asking you questions? Maybe if they're having trouble going to the bathroom or different thing, is there places where people can go look at things and learn things? Well, I'm going. We're starting, and uh, if you go to www.pottycap. Okay. There's where our information is. Fantastic. But I'm also de developing a library resources okay. on things like when incontinence starts or different things like that. So you're like the third person that asked me that. So awesome. we're, in the, we're in the process of developing a resource library for that. Oh, yeah. fantastic. But I will tell any woman, don't accept the fact that once you're having trouble uh, maintaining or being uh, becoming incontinent, that's something you have to live with because it's not. But that's a secret that a lot of women keep to themselves because mm -hmm. they feel like they're the only ones out there who can't do this. Uh, but it's, it, it's, it's over 40% of women in one time in their life will have a problem with continence. Continence. Okay. That mm -hmm. makes sense. That makes sense. Well, uh, Ms. Fergus, tell people where they could find the product and how they could get in touch with you guys. I'd love, please share okay. that. Great. Well, we're selling on Amazon. If you go okay. again to www.pottycap.com, okay. it will take you straight to, to the Amazon store. If you're a business and you're looking at a B2B with us, like if you're in an assisted uh -huh. living or long-term care where you would like to have some in stock, yeah. then those are those that, that's on a wholesale price. And again, there's a phone number you can that's also on the website that you can contact us okay. and we'll be happy to talk with you because that's what I do full time now. I, I, I retired last summer and this is my full time gig. That's that's awesome. You thought you were going to rest and relax. And next thing you know, you're working twice as much as you were, I bet, but you're enjoying you know every minute of it. This is the truth. Yeah. <laughs> And it's not like a seven to four, like I had at the facility. Like you said, sometimes it's seven to four, it's seven to seven. Sometimes I wake up at 10 o'clock and go, oh, you forgot to do so-and-so. So you're at the uh, computer, but yeah. I love it. Wow. I love it. That's so awesome. That's so awesome. Well, Faye, uh, you've been an uh, inspiration. This has had twofold, I'm sure, an inspiration to any budding entrepreneur or anybody with a dream out there that wants to make something happen. You've you've really given them some insight, but also, too, you've shown no matter what it is, nothing happens unless you take action. So I applaud you for 
having a plan, but like you said, you didn't know anyone that went through the whole process, not because they didn't want to do it, it's because they didn't have enough stick to itness, perseverance like you had. So congratulations to you for making it all the way through and now changing lives. Well, thank you, man. I, and I appreciate you because I kind of felt like I was bugging you a little bit too, but I, I, I enjoy it. I, hey. And I see that same tenacity in you on what you do. You're a uh, go-getter too. Well, thank you. I appreciate you saying that. Appreciate you saying that. So please reach out to Faye if you'd like to learn more about her and what she does. And feel free to follow up with us as far as the Serving Senior Podcast. Subscribe. Make sure you stay in touch. And please feel free to reach out to any of our guests about their products and what they do to serve seniors at such a high level. So thanks again for watching. Have a great, great day. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Hey, this is Matt Helton with One Trust Home Loans, home of Retirement Mortgage Solutions. And we really do appreciate you checking out the Serving Seniors podcast today. Now, please go to the description down in the body uh, of the podcast where you can subscribe to get future shows. Please click that notification button so you get notified when other shows drop. And also, if you can go to servingseniorspodcast.com, and we'd love to hear a comment about our show. We have a heart to serve seniors, and we have a heart to make sure seniors don't just survive retirement. Don't just get by in retirement. We want to show seniors how to thrive in retirement. So if you know of anyone that's 55 and older that could use some extra cash flow, maybe the retirement's not going the way that they like, our retirement mortgage solutions are designed for folks, depending on the state, they're either 55 or 62 and older to make sure that they have that kind of retirement that they want as long as they own a home and they're in a good equity position, there could be some solutions that they may not have thought about or maybe they thought of and they just didn't know how they work. That's what we do. So anyone in that age group that could use some mortgage advice, my team and I would love to be able to help them. Thanks again and look forward to seeing you on the next show. Have a great day.